all, thank you for, uh, for coming and uh, listening to what I have to share today. And uh, again, thank you for the committee for inviting us to be part of the event. We're proud this year to be sponsoring the CITA Green Gathering and hope to be at future events uh, soon. So, just for my benefit, and this presentation may be a little bit shorter, uh, so my role is Business Development Director for Revisto, uh, for our European branch. Who here is aware of what Revisto is? Oh, great, this should be nice and easy then. So, um, well, I've been having this conversation for about two and a half years, and uh, for those of you who haven't seen Revisto for a while, then it's, you know, your perception is going to change quite drastically. So today's talk, I want to focus on how we can digitalize the traditional processes in construction projects today around collaboration, uh, because we speak about digital and BIM, and when we get to the nuts and bolts of what's actually going on, it's actually still very, very traditional. And for me, and what we're doing, is helping companies embrace the benefits of digital to, to help move away from that, so we can become leaner, work smarter, not harder. And we need to do that and change from a more traditional way of working because we're at risk, right? So you probably recognize some of the, the names and the brands that are, you know, the digital world, is a, it, it constantly evolves, right? And this isn't just uh, across these sectors, but this is also applicable to construction. So my colleague Craig at the back, who's going to help out in a little bit, uh, he's now got rid of his butler and is using a, an Amazon Alexa, but I didn't, didn't want to add that to this slide. So, um, that digitalization is relevant today in construction. So for me, I suppose, to understand who the audience is, let's have a show of hands. Who here in the room is an architect? Okay, perfect. Are you working? Contractor. <laughs> Many hats. So contractors, yeah? Engineers? Okay. Owners, clients? Quantity surveyors, there we go, perfect. Any singers in the room? No? Just myself. <laughs> okay, great. So an interesting mix. So what we're finding, and again, the reason I ask that is because this slide is applicable to all of you, but in a slightly different way. Everyone we speak to when Craig and I sit down for the first time with a project team, there are multiple communication streams on every project, right? So I won't ask, start asking these questions out, but we'll, we'll see people that are printing out drawings, redlining those up, and scanning and sending those via email. Others are marking them up with a, a digital markup tool and sending those out as an email, as a PDF, and updating an Excel spreadsheet to uh, understand who they've sent that to. And that may be an RFI. It may be out on a construction site where we've got a drawing and we're taking pictures to, to capture defects or snags. Then we've got models. So model capture, if we spot uh, an issue in a, an Archicad model or a Revit model or a 3D model, how do we communicate that issue with somebody, well, typically that's a snapshot, and again, an email with um, a, a PDF, clash detection, Navisworks Salibri. There's multiple ways of sharing the clashes as well. So we've got BCF managers, HTML files, XML reports, you know, the, the list goes on and on and on. So we get to this stage with, well, how do I manage all of this, the multiple communication streams? It's difficult, time consuming, and this is where problems can arise. So we're helping organizations stitch all of that together effectively in one place in our application because if we continue to do this, I'll come back to that, the earlier slide I talked about, about digitalizing, we're simply less productive than we can be. So this was a, re a report that was uh, done by Harvard that talks about context switching, jumping from one tool or task to another, and everybody we speak to is doing this, and on average we're, we're losing two hours a day productivity. We're here, to help, here today to help organizations claw some of that time back. And the word I love to use is gamification. So this is a real strength of what we do, gamification of BIM or digital, whatever you want to call it. If we are going to digitalize uh, the project team, the technology needs to be lightweight, simple, and easy to use, right? We don't want to be spending lots of money on more tools and training people over three or four days. It needs to be simple. Simplicity is key. So Revisto can bring in file formats from lots of different places. Again, we were actually uh, speaking to somebody in the hall earlier on about how to pronounce Revisto. So it's not Revisto, it's Revisto, which means visual check in Latin. So even though the name looks like Revit, it's got nothing to do with Revit. We have support for many different applications, file formats, as you can see. Our focus is around issue tracking. 
Think of issues as, as a task. So I talked about RFIs, snagging, uh, FM tasks. The difference with Revisto is it it's a tool that you can use right around the, the th well, throughout the whole project lifecycle effectively from design into construction through into FM. So we're not jumping from one tool to another to another to another. So let's just jump into a live demo if, if I can and I'll show you around. So, so what we've got here, this is a hospital project that I've exported from, uh, from Revit. And here we have it in Revisto. So we have the plugin in the tools I mentioned where we export that model through. We can set an interval to, to run that automatically and maybe we set that up to run weekly. That's a hard part and Craig can show you how to do all of that. I'm more interested in looking at the model and the drawings in one place and starting to raise comments and questions. So let's just click the home button here. We've got three or now four buttons across the top. 2D information, 3D models, and issues or questions, right? All of these are tightly connected to one another. So for me, not being a Revit user or a Tecla user or a point cloud person, that simplicity and gamification comes really useful here. So I can choose how I want to navigate through. So I'm going to use the gaming controls, which are four keys. So I can start to navigate through this rather large technical set of uh, models here. So we've got a Tecla model, a Revit model, uh, maybe an Archicad model. It can be all sorts. And I can start to navigate through here quickly and easily. It's lightweight. Everything I'm showing you now, I could also do on a, on a tablet. So getting around is quick, simple, and easy. And there's lots of tools across the top here. So we can navigate through room by room. Maybe I want to uh, look in the plant room. That will take me there. We can go in and cut sections. So you can start to see where this gaming feel really helps us to engage everybody, not just the technical bin people, but the non-technical people as well. So we can get around quickly and easily. So that's the 3D models quickly. We've also now got our drawings here. So all of these drawings have come in from all of the consultants. So if I just take a look at one of these <coughs> GAs here, what I do a lot as well is every project we sit down with, there's still those that prefer to look at 2D drawings, and rightly so, because there are contract everyone hear me okay? Yeah, perfect. Contractual uh, deliverable, and others that prefer to look at the 3D models. So you get this sort of gap between those who prefer to look at models and those that prefer to look at drawings. Revisto really helps bridge that gap. So I can pan and zoom here and inspect, but I've got this green icon that's appeared here for me automatically. So create this out of the project. He's invited us all in. Everything I'm showing you now, you'll be able to, to do. So if I click on this green icon, just watch what happens. So this now overlays that drawing sheet automatically in place in the model. So this could be uh, you know, a point cloud and a PDF, where we can overlay 2D information in the 3D model. That works. Revista has been doing that for how long, Craig? Six, seven years? Yep. There or thereabouts. So this is new. That may be new for you if it's the first time you've seen it, but this is what a lot, a lot of people like to use for communication of technical drawings for somebody that doesn't understand what that drawing actually means or says because it's quite technical. But coordination. If we've got a, a 3D model from the architect and a lot of 2D de details from the structural engineer, how do we check that? How do you check that? Right? It's a difficult task. This really helps you view all of that information in a completely new way. So as a tool just to review the model and get around its lightweight, quick, simple, and we can take measurements, we can navigate through by viewpoints. It really is a breeze to use. Whilst I'm on this, actually, we can also set up a camera share. So in here, we can see uh, everyone in the project and if they're online. So Craig, who's Tom Jones for the day, is using an iPad at the back there. So I can invite Craig into the project here to have a camera share session. So let's imagine that uh, you're all in different rooms, uh, in different offices right around the world, but we're all in this particular project. So I can start to navigate through as I showed you. So Craig there, or Tom, is green so he can see everything that I'm looking at. So we're on a, a conference call. And I can say, uh, Craig, do you want to show me around uh, you know, the, the particular area you've got some questions about? So I can give him control, take my hands off, off the steering wheel, so to speak. And now Craig is navigating through that <coughs> project for me. So we're just sharing the camera position. So this is really, really you can see here, uh, if you look at the back, you can see Craig's iPad and it's uh, 
very, very slick and quick. So everything I'm showing you here, we can deliver to the project teams on a tablet. So if you're site-based, you want to take the tablet out on site, you can also work offline without an internet connection, but again, just to engage and look at the data behind it. So that's the fun stuff. Let's get back to that uh, digital collaboration. So regardless if we're looking at 2D information, 3D information, we've always got this plus icon here, which is how you create an issue, a question, a task, right? And these are also available in the authoring tools as well, so it doesn't matter where you are. So what I'm going to do now quite quickly is create what we've called as a stamp. So a stamp is an issue, but it's an issue template. So we'll create one right now. So abbreviation, create, fire away, we'll call this CITA bin gathering. There we go. And we'll call it, uh, let's say it's a snag for now. I can add this to one of the categories. So for the project team, you're basically creating some issue templates. This can be for, uh, let's say, operations and click OK. Then we're going to fill in some fields here. So we can give this stamp a particular color. We'll go for... I was going to go for Red for Wales because we were number one in the World Cup rankings well, recently. You, well, Ireland were recently as well. Let, let's go, New Zealand's the number one? I won't swear because I'll get told off, but we'll just go with black then for the all blacks for now, right? And then we go through here, we can assign this to, so any issue that relate, this type of issue is all automatically going to get assigned to Craig at the back. And Derek is going to be in CC. We can tag the issue, specification, or snag. And that's now created the stamp for us. So as we're navigating through here, if we spot something that doesn't quite look right, we can select that stamp. Here, click, and that now automatically creates the issue for me that's been assigned to Tom with the relevant information, a deadline, and all of the other associated information as well. So that ping is that notification. And Craig then can come online and start to ask me questions here as well. So I wonder if this chart is going to work on my laptop before I run as quickly as I can to the exhibition hall. Probably not. But maybe would you mind grabbing my chart, Craig? Please, mate. So we can start to ask questions back and forth in real time. So that works in 2D and 3D. So if we, we spot an issue on a 2D drone, we'll use the same stamp here We click. And that now replaces the process of me having to mark up a drawing, send an email with a PDF, tracking that in Excel or whatever it may be. So that's been logged in our issue tracker along with everything else. So here those issues live. So in here we can start to see every issue ID gets given a unique, every issue, sorry, gets given a unique ID. We can see who it's assigned to, the status of it, and as all of these issues are being created, amended and changed, we are creating a log in the background for our dashboarding system where we can start to produce PDF reports, dashboards. So I've set these up, I've shared this, this with the project managers and they can just look here on their phone that's telling me, show me all of the issues in this project, actually show me all of the issues that have been assigned to uh, Gensler or whoever it may be, how many issues that person has and the status of them. So these colors refer to the status of issues, think of a traffic light signaling, signaling system, open in progress, solved. So it starts to help you get a really good understanding of project performance in a way that you couldn't do right now. Because if you go back to those multiple communication communications <coughs> where information and issues are stored in various places, pulling all of that together is a time consuming task and a very difficult task. We can bring through, here we go, for power just in time as well. Here we go, Craig. So this demonstration is live, so uh, nothing's broken. Not my usual example of implementation. The iPad's still running, right? So this machine... Saying that, this... We, you don't really need a, um, a heavy machine either to run Robista, so it compresses the, those models down quite considerably, and as you Craig's running that, that project there on the tablet at the back. So we've marked up the model. Uh, if the issue is something a little unique and it doesn't quite fit that stamp category, we can go in here, position that blue marker, and then I can mark up that drawing just as I would do in the traditional way. So we get buy-in quite quickly where users 
don't really think that they're doing anything too differently, but they're saving a heck of a lot of time, typically about an hour a day, because they're not having to do everything I'm showing you now manually. So we can annotate this and say, uh, we need to change this for whatever reason, and we can change the color of the text and styles and so on and so forth. Give this a name, issue, and then that's logged. But now because that issue has been uh, created that way, I can go through the process of assigning a deadline here. We can go in and assign this to Tom. We can leave comments here. So you can see now this way is a slightly longer way of creating the issue as opposed to the stamp, so they're quite new. The stamps are just templates and a much quicker route of creating issues lean, efficiently. So we're calling it single click issue management. The blue icon here is intelligent. It lives on the project's coordinate system. So again, coming back to that point of somebody reviewing drawings, somebody preferring to look at models, I've got the ability here to check where that issue is in 3D. So I can jump from that marked up drawing to exactly where that issue is in the federated 3D model. So now, communication of the issue, you've heard these pings, is in real time. Where the issue is, is absolutely clear. And how we get to that issue is literally a double click here. And then if you're out on site, that may be Craig, could be a, you know, a, something that's been built incorrectly, so you want to capture that as well. So, the issue tracker is quite a diverse tool. It's a tool to help manage and track tasks effectively. So let me just link my Revit model to this Revisto project. So depending on your role, you would point your Revit, Tecla, Archicad, Navisworks model to the Revisto project that Craig has set up for us. We add all of our commentary, BIM coordination, digital collaboration happens in Revisto, and then that's by directionally link back to your authoring software. So let me just explain that again. So you think about if you've recently received a, an email with a marked up drawing or a 3D snip, snippet. Anybody have that recently? Anyone be sent an email? It stays in between these four walls. I'm not going to tell anybody, just to, to help uh, here. Anyone received an email with a snippet of a, yeah? There we go, perfect, okay. How long would it take you to find where that is in your authoring software? takes a little bit of time, right? Because you, where is it? What is it? Navigate to it. Again, Revisto does that for you automatically. So if you're spending five, ten minutes to do that, and there's ten issues a day, you do the math, right? Double click here in the issue tracker, and that takes you exactly to where that issue is in your authoring software. So that bi-directional link does a number of things. It saves me time and effort, and it also avoids any duplicate errors being occurring because I've moved the wrong thing. Same with 3D. So if we take a look here in our filtering tool, the issue track is a bit like a Google search engine for issues. So I can filter by number, name. We can always go back and use this as our digital audit trail, single source of truth, and a true single source of truth for issues. And we've created here some presets. So we can bring in all of our clashes as well. A clash is a task that gets assigned to somebody here in Revisto. So with the interest of time, I won't go through the whole process. Yep, just wrap it up. So good cue there. We can export our clashes through. They come here into Revisto. Again, that clash is positioned intelligently here so we can get a good understanding of what and where that clash is. Because it's positioned on the project's coordinate system, we can see what drawings are affected. And it'll also, when I double click here, so I can assign that clash in Revisto, rather than having to look at a PDF report, a HTML file, or a BCF, whatever it is, I've received the clash here in real time, I double click, that takes me exactly to where that clash is with a section box cut automatically. So I'm gonna stop there and leave you ask some questions. And uh, let's say thank you for, for listening to me. We're, we're also at stand, I uh, should know if I just pull up this slide to close up. Well, it's Craig's side. Come and join the fun today. Work smarter, not harder. And uh, we're here to help just a number of our clients. Questions. We're at booth 16 and there's my email address. Should you have any questions or if you'd like to try and revisit yourself, we offer trial accounts. So just drop myself or Craig an email and we'll be happy to, to help you. Right, Stephen? Thanks. Thank you. Any questions on the floor? I have a question.
that's going to be in that software. Any, any, can you incorporate any software into that? Does it have to be worked for, you know, is there a limit? We <coughs> haven't seen a, a limit, so, um, I mean, this, the short answer is we could probably get in most file formats. Um, so we can bring in reality capture, 360 photos, IFC, FBX, BCF, a whole if I'm seeing this one. So but, uh, the short answer is probably, I uh, will just open that up while we finish the question. But this is a, how big is this, Craig? Is this a 15 gigabyte point cloud? of a cave somewhere in Spain. Anyone been to Spain? Anyone been to San Bernabe Cave? So this is that point cloud, a point cloud of this particular facility, or cave facility, where we can start to do everything that I've just run through today, but again, on my tablet. So in here somewhere, there's the Faro team. We can bring that directly into Rubisto with your models and do everything I've just shown you. So there's no restriction around what data we can bring in and why should that be, right? So. It's digitalized today and come and say how do you import that in? Yeah. Import the point cloud directly. Yeah. Project, import whatever file format you have. Last one, go up and then I'm gonna get kicked and off the stage. It, Wouldn't be the first time. Do, does it do automated clash detection? We yes. don't so you do your clash detection in Navisworks and that comes through directly into Rubisco. There is a direct link. Yeah, so there's a plug-in here in Navisworks, and you bring the clashes directly here. But we're going to have a chat later anyway. There's yeah. things that I want to say, but I've been told by Craig I'm not to divulge too much, of, I'm too much about our roadmap yet. So any questions, we're in the, the exhibition area. Come and say hello and ask away. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks All right, guys. Cheers. Okay.